Vector tools are used extensively in image editing when creating design elements, logos, illustrations, and even for things like masking out objects. These tools can be a little tricky to get started with, but after today's tutorial, you'll have more than enough knowledge to use them with ease. The very first thing you need to know is where to find the vector tools. The default location is at the bottom of the tool list here, just above the group type tools. The first group contains the pen and freeform pen tools, while the second group contains all the shape tools. If you're planning to work mainly on illustrations or vector-based designs, you might want to change the Pixelmator Pro workspace layout. You'll find the option for that by choosing Window, Workspace Layout, Illustration. Now, some of the pixel-based tools have been removed, and all the vector and text tools are much more easily accessible because they're no longer grouped together. In the rest of this tutorial, we'll use a default layout, but remember that you can always switch to the illustration layout if you'd like. Keyboard shortcuts are one of the keys to working more quickly and efficiently. To quickly choose the pen tool, you can press the P key on your keyboard. And to choose the shape tool, you can press the U key. However, there's more than one pen tool and more than one shape tool, so you can cycle through them using the Shift U and Shift P keyboard shortcuts. There are many other useful vector tool shortcuts, and we'll share some of the others throughout this tutorial. To make it easier to understand paths themselves, it helps to know what exactly makes up a vector path. There's anchor points. These are the red points that appear when you click or drag on the canvas. The lines extending from these points are called direction lines. These lines determine how the vector path curves from one point to the next. And a section of the path between two points is called a segment. Paths can be both open and closed, and you'll need to know the difference between the two. Before we start drawing, let's turn off the stroke layer style and rely just on the shape outline. Shape outlines don't appear in the exported image, but they can be a little more convenient to work with instead of using fills and outlines straight away because we can always add those later. If you ever want to hide or show the vector outline, simply control click the canvas and choose Show Shape Outline or Hide Shape Outline. Now, to start drawing a path with a pen tool, click to add some points on the canvas. If you'd like to delete your most recently added point, you can press the backspace key. To finish your path and close it, click the very first point or press the return key. To finish your path and leave it open, double click anywhere or press the escape key. If a path only has a fill, there isn't really a big difference between closed and open paths. They look the same in most circumstances. However, if a path also has a stroke, you'll see there's an obvious difference between an open and a closed path. In a nutshell, a closed path is basically a shape, while an open one is more of a line. If you've drawn an open path and would like to close it, you can start editing the path, select one of the endpoints, control click it, and choose Start Drawing. Now, simply click the first point or press the return key just like before. Clicking to add points with the pen tool creates sharp points, which are also called corner points. If instead of clicking your mouse, you drag it, this creates smooth anchor points with direction lines. That way, the path curves around the anchor point according to the length of the direction lines. If you make a path editable by control clicking it and choosing Make Editable, you'll be able to convert a sharp point to a smooth one and vice versa. To do that, select a point, control click it, and choose one of the two options. You can also double click a point to change its type. Another thing you can do is separate the direction lines of a smooth point. To do that, drag a direction line while pressing and holding the Option key. If you'd like to join the direction lines back together again, release the Option key. And if you want to finish editing the point while keeping the direction lines separated, make sure to keep holding the Option key until you release your mouse. All these things might seem a little complex at the moment, but simply try out each of the modifier keys, Option, Shift, and Command, while you draw, and after a while, you'll start using them intuitively. You don't have to wait until you finish drawing a path to edit its anchor points and direction lines. You can also make changes on the fly using the same modifier keys. 
As you're drawing a path, you can option drag a direction line anchor to separate the direction lines. You can also command drag anchor points and direction lines to edit them as you draw your path. You know now that paths can be both open and closed, and sometimes dividing an existing closed path can be a great way to create some new shapes. For example, let's add an ellipse to the canvas. Now make it editable either using the shortcut menu on the canvas or the trusty return keyboard shortcut. Let's select the top point of the ellipse, then control click it and choose divide path. Now there are going to be two points at this location which we can see if we drag one of them. If we drag the mouse over both to select them, then press the backspace key, you'll end up with a perfect semicircle, which can be super useful. If you add a stroke to this path, you'll end up with a kind of arc. Whereas if you want a full semicircle shape, you can control click the path and choose close path. Oh, and one more thing, you can also always add additional points to a path. To do that, either control click a path and choose add point, or simply double click the location where you'd like to add the point while in path editing mode. When it comes to designs, logos, and other elements, most of the time these won't be drawn with a pen tool, but will be created using other basic shapes like ellipses and rectangles. The reason for that is drawing perfectly geometrically correct paths by hand is just very hard. So let's say you want to create a cloud shape. Let's see how to do that using basic shapes. First, choose the shape tool, select the ellipse shape, and click to add one on the canvas. To keep everything perfectly in proportion, turn on the Constrain Proportions option. Then resize and position the circle. Once you've done that, duplicate the shape. There are a few different ways to duplicate a layer. This time, let's drag it while holding the Option and Command keys. Resize it and position it like this. Because we're using one of the shape tools, to move a layer, you'll need to command drag it. That's also why we needed to press both the Option and Command keys to duplicate the shape instead of just the Option key as usual. Now repeat these steps a few more times to create a few more circles. There, that should do it. Finally, select all these shapes by command dragging your mouse over them and click the Unite button in the Tool Options pane. In the Layer sidebar, you'll see that there is now a shape with several components inside it. The final touch will be to make the bottom of the cloud flat. This time, we'll subtract a shape. Choose a rectangle shape and draw a rectangle near the bottom of the cloud shape. Just like before, command drag over all these shapes, and this time, click the subtract button in the tool options pane. To see what your finished shape looks like, press the escape key. If you want to, you can also select individual shape components and adjust their size and position. If you control click the shape in the layer sidebar, there's also an option to merge shape components if you'd like to have just a single shape. For example, for combining with other shapes. The vector tools are full of interesting and useful features that we didn't cover in this video. But with this knowledge under your belt, you've got more than enough to feel confident using these tools. In our next tutorial, we'll show you how to trace sketches and drawings, which is a great way to practice using these tools. And if you're looking for more Pixelmator Pro content, you'll find lots of it on our channel, which you can also subscribe to if you'd like to be notified about every new tutorial as soon as it goes live. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.